All right, today we're gonna to take a look at the electric field which is produced not by a single charge, but by multiple charges. And we're gonna do that by looking at a test charge which we're gonna place halfway between these two charges that are separated one meter apart from one another. Now you'll remember, the electric field is given by where K is Coulomb's constant, Q is the magnitude of the charge, and R is the distance between our test charge and the charge which we're concerned with. Now realize this equation only tells us about the electric field as the result of a single charge. Now in this problem we have two separate charges. So in order to determine the total electric field at this point, we're going to look at the electric field as a result of this charge, and then separately the electric field as a result of this charge. Now looking at this situation entirely in a conceptual manner, we know that if we place a positive test charge at this point right here, it is going to repel this positive one microcoulombs of charge sitting over here a half meter away. That means this positive test charge will be pushed to the right, or really we could say the electric field by this positive one microcoulomb charge is to the right. And I'm gonna call this the electric field from charge one. Now there's also gonna be an electric field from this two microcoulomb charge over here, but realize this two microcoulomb charge is negative. And when you have a positive test charge close to a negative charge, those charges are going to be attracted. And so this negative charge right here is going to be producing a electric field that is also to the right here. I'm gonna call that the electric field from charge two. And realize these electric fields are vectors, so we're simply going to add together these vectors in order to come up with the total electric field. So applying our equation for electric field first to the field produced by this positive one microcoulomb charge, we find the electric field at this point produced by this charge is 36,000 newtons per coulomb. That simply tells us that if we were to put a one coulomb test charge right here, there would be 36,000 newtons of force acting on it. Now working out the electric field from this second charge, we find the electric field at this point from this negative two microcoulomb charge is 72,000 newtons per coulomb. Now you'll notice I didn't include the negative in my calculation here. Uh, the negatives and the positives can serve to help us understand the direction in which a electric field is acting. But I find when you put it in the math, it can become a bit confusing. What I prefer to do is leave the negatives and positives out of the calculations and simply determine their directions conceptually, like what we did here. But remember, we're trying to find the total electric field, which is going to be the sum of the two electric fields. And we find the total electric field at this point right here is 108,000 newtons per coulomb. Next, I wanna go through and work out the magnitude and direction of the electric field at a point that is not nice and neatly centered between these two charges. Because of Coulomb's law, a positive test charge, which is placed right here in our electric field, is going to be pushed away from this one microcoulomb charge. That will be up and to the right. And this positive test charge placed right here will be pulled down and to the right towards this two microcoulomb charge. And in this problem, we're going to solve for the total electric field. And much like before, we're simply going to look at the sum of these two electric fields. But remember, electric fields are a vector. So really all we're doing here is vector addition. So in order to find the sum of these two vectors, what we first need to do is come up with the magnitude of each of these vectors. And we find the electric field as a result of the one microcoulomb charge is 18,000 newtons per coulomb. And the magnitude of the electric field from the two microcoulomb charge is 36,000 newtons per coulomb. Now it's tempting to simply add together these two magnitudes, but remember we're dealing with vector addition here, where we have a vector that's up and to the right and a vector that's down and to the right. 
So in order to add these two vectors, we're going to need to break these vectors up into their magnitudes in each axis and then add them together. Now remember, we have to be a little bit careful when doing vector addition because the vertical components here are in opposite directions. So I'm gonna go ahead and say the vertical components that are up are positive and down are negative. That means this term right here is negative. So in coming up with our total electric field horizontally, we're simply going to add together the two horizontal components. We come up with 38,183 newtons per coulomb. And vertically, we come up with negative 12,728 newtons per coulomb. So knowing the components of our total electric field, we can now solve for the magnitude of the total electric field using the Pythagorean theorem. We find the electric field at this point has a magnitude of 40,248 newtons per coulomb. And to find the direction of the electric field, we simply use the inverse tangent. And we find the electric field has a direction of 18.4 degrees below the positive x-axis. So what we've done in this problem is we've seen that the total electric field at any point due to a series of charges is simply the sum of all of the electric fields at that point. And we have to be a little bit careful because electric fields are vectors. And so we're gonna have to do some vector addition in order to determine those electric fields and their directions at different points. But on that note, that's all for now.